My name is Simeon. I'm integration lead for Neon EVM. So how many of you are developers and hackers here? Are there any hackers? Okay, nice. Uh, how many of you use Hardhead development framework? Okay, only a couple. How many of you use Foundry? Wow, a lot of Foundry users, okay, that's good. And yeah, today I will talk about what Neon EVM is and how do we help scaling uh, Ethereum dApps. So I guess for all of you happened a lot that, uh, you know, you want to swap your uh, 10 USDC into some uh, shit or scam coin on Ethereum. And basically at the same time, some degen NFT collection is, uh, you know, out and trending and everyone tries to mint it. And basically gas fees are going to eat like all of your 10 USDC that you have, uh, you know, saved for, uh, for months. And, uh, I think that's pretty, you know, bad. And, um, uh, you know, one of the main, uh, I would say disadvantages for Ethereum is that, uh, one trending DAP can congest the whole network. And uh, this actually is not really beneficial for all users. So what did we build in Neon EVM is we built an EVM that is using the architecture and basically execution layer of Solana. And a lot of people and hackers asked me, is it a layer two? Is it a layer one? Uh, actually it's not it's neither a layer two, it's nor a layer one. It's actually something in between. And let me just show you a quick slide of the architecture. So as you can see, uh, Neon EVM is actually not anything more than just a smart contract in Solana that can execute uh, EVM bytecode in, in Solana virtual machine. So we have built a smart contract in Rust that uh, understands of EVM bytecode and can execute this bytecode without the Solana virtual machine. But with, the, with only having this uh, smart contract, basically we can't really bring up uh, Ethereum developers and uh, EVM users uh, because basically they would need to change their tech stack and uh, Ethereum users can't really use um, MetaMask or their EVM wallets. So we have uh, also one more uh, pretty important component called the EVM, uh, uh, called the Neon Proxy. And as you can see, the Neon Proxy on the one side actually accepts Ethereum-like transactions. It uh, provides uh, uh, just an Ethereum RPC API. And on the other side, it unwraps the Ethereum transaction, creates a Solana transaction, and calls our Neon EVM program inside it. And, um, and you're gonna ask, okay, how do you, uh, how do you, for example, uh, solve scalability issues? And uh, it's simple. It's simple because of uh, Solana parallel execution. And uh, actually um, how Solana works is that, uh, let me just show you one more slide. Yeah, I think Solana is actually stateless and basically when constructing a Solana transaction, this is actually what a Solana transaction looks like. And as you can see below the header, we have the account list. So this account list basically defines all the accounts that are going to be read and written to for this transaction. So if we have two different dApps, let's say we have uh, one DEX and one N NFT collection. And if the same, uh, if we have two same transactions posted at the same time, those transactions are going to be uh, executed, uh, not sequentially, but uh, parallelly. And uh, that's actually um, the, the, the whole example that I gave you that uh, one DAP cannot congest the whole network actually holds for Ethereum, but doesn't hold for Solana. The gas prices will go uh, up only for that app, but for uh, other DAPs, uh, the gas prices will remain uh, low. And uh, this is something that you can actually use. Um, 
and uh, also let me just go to the other slide so we enable developers deploy on solana but without changing their tech stack the same as users they can use metamask they can use their evm account so if you are using hardhead if you're using foundry it's all right you just change the rpc to our rpc and you can deploy um uh another good thing is that we, we our main uh, aim is to become fully interoperable with Solana. So uh, for now, we only showcase uh, and I'm going to show you how we can deploy a Solana SPL token with uh, as a wrapped ERC-20. And uh, basically you can underlyingly mint, you can underlyingly transfer from your MetaMask and SPL token and uh, you can use it in your DAP. So, uh, Let's just go and see. This is just a very, very simple um, hard head project. And this is the interesting part. So you can see we have a token that is called ERC for SPL. And you can see something very interesting. Here, uh, here are the two um, Solana token programs that are basically Neoni VM has a pre-compiled contract that can interact natively with Solana, SPL, and Metaflex. And you can see we have wrapped the whole ERC-20 interface with, um, uh, with co uh, calling the underlying SPL uh, token. So we also, have, um, we also have a deployment script. You can see, so what the deployment script does, it deploys a token and then after that, it means to the deployer account just uh, 100 tokens. So let me show you. Um, let's just run and wait a little bit. Let me just show you what in the configuration we have to do. Basically, as you can see, we only add Neon DevNet as um, another network. If you go to Neon Docs, you can see that... Uh, here are all the materials, so you can see how to configure uh, and use dev tools. Uh, we have the neon faucet. Basically, you can uh, connect your MetaMask. Just uh, request 100 tokens. You're going to see our MetaMask. Yeah, we have received the tokens. And uh, yeah, you can just go ahead and deploy. So our um, token is deployed. If we come and see, uh, let's find new scan. Yeah, so this is our native explorer. So if we go to DevNet, okay, and now you you can see that we have two um, two transactions. The first is contract created and the, the second one is mint. Uh, basically, we can also, if you want, uh, uh, we can basically verify our contract. Um, let me just see. We need, yeah, we need the four... the four parameters and we need the deploy address let's just take it from from metamask because that's the deploy okay so now we should verify our contract again is the same as verifying with etherscan um, okay, false, byte code mismatch, maybe we need to, uh, let's trench. Hmm. Okay. 
Anyways, uh, let's just not lose time with that. And uh, I want to show you some interesting things uh, here in this transaction. So if we come and basically add our uh, token, I guess uh, the, the problem here is in uh, Hardhead um, uh, some cash. So if I had uh, just uh, cleaned all the cash and artifacts, uh, maybe um, it will work. So it's not a, a big deal. Um, Let's just add our token in our um, okay you can see we have the token and we have 100 uh, tokens so the most important thing is that you can see the transaction hash and you can see we have one underlying Solana transaction right because we have deployed our contract on Solana and it's an actual, if we click, we can basically see that this is the Solana Explorer and we can basically see that we have minted a hundred tokens on Solana on SPL. So that showcase that we have actually interacted uh, with the Solana SPL program. And le let's just try to, uh, you know, we have the token here right now let's just send it to let's say this account just copy this account um i just sent 50 tokens yeah so right now we are transferring from one account to another EZM account, but underlyingly, we will also perform the SPL transfer in Solana network. So it's confirmed. Let's see what happens. So, so this is the transfer. As you can see, we, we can see from that we have transferred and also we have one underlying Solana transactions and the Solana transaction actually transfer from this account to the other. As you can see, this is something uh, interesting. Uh, here the addresses are the same, but actually the transfer from and to is actually in this uh, account uh, metadata because um, basically Solana is um, a little bit different than Ethereum. Solana is stateless. So um, I can show you another slide. Um, this is a typical Solana program. Uh, in a nutshell, Solana is like a big file system. So you have two types of uh, accounts. You have program account and you have a data account. So you can see that a Solana program uh, has some uh, executable BPF bytecode and we have a flag executable. So this is an execute, uh, executable stateless contract. And how does the contract create a state by itself? Is it creates a Solana data accounts for itself and actually save the state there. So basically how Neon EVM works is basically Neon EVM is a stateless smart contract that can execute bytecode. And um, you can see we have uh, Neon account, which is like an externally owned account, which is like a data account. And inside the data, we have all the Ethereum metadata, for example, ether address, null balance, and so on. And uh, for example, we can, Neon EVM can deploy another contract and the same, those contracts, when they want to uh, save their state, they create themselves uh, another data account. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we have, uh, three or four minutes left. So I'll just leave it for um, for some questions. So as we can see, we have native interoperability with Solana, but in the future, we, we will try to achieve a full interoperability. So the developers can use any contract, can integrate with any Solana smart contract only by uh, using Solidity and using their um, EVM DevTools. 
yeah, I'll leave some time for questions if you have. Maybe something interesting, like we have all the most important materials uh, here in our um, uh, in our docs. We also have some tutorials how to deploy with hardhead and and so on and so on. So you know, it doesn't really matter how. If you want, you can just start as a beginner and just deploy on your EVM. It's not uh, it's not that hard. Maybe, yeah, maybe I can share something interesting that we are almost uh, going to uh, start and introduce support for Solana NFTs. So for builders that are interested in some uh, Solana collections, they can deploy their dApps on Neon EVM and basically use their Solana collections soon and introduce them to their dApp. Or if you want to use Solana liquidity, you can just, let's say, deploy a Uniswap V2 fork and basically deploy a pool with SPL tokens on Solana or deploy a pool with from like maybe create like a hybrid pairs like a SPL and ERC20 pair or anything like that. So uh, it brings up a lot of other possibilities for, um, uh, you know, for DeFi as well. 